11 Excellent New Essential Travel Photography Tips for Beginners Hi and welcome to episode 79 of the Photography Explained podcast. I'm your host Rick and in each episode I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 10 minutes-ish without the irrelevant detail. What I tell you is based on my lifetime of photographic experience and not Google. Nothing against Google of course, just need to say that. Before I go on, if you have a question you'd like me to answer, just go to photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. Right, here is the answery bit. I love travel photography, and in this episode, I'm going to give you 11 tips, 11 things for you to think about if you're considering getting into travel photography. Now, these are not your usual tips, but the 11 things that came into my head that I think will help you. These are very wide-ranging tips based on my experiences as a travel photographer over many years. This is the first episode in a series about travel photography, which between us I'm rather excited to do. Enjoy! First, what is travel photography? I thought we should start at the beginning. There's lots of definitions of what travel photography is, but for me, travel photography is taking photos that make someone else want to be there. It is that simple. Wherever you are when you take a photo of a place, many other people are not fortunate enough to be there. And it's your job, as a travel photographer, to show a place to its best and for the viewer to want to go there. Let's not overthink this. That's all we're trying to achieve here. And if you simplify your thinking, things become easier. I've overcomplicated many things in my life. Number two, you don't have to travel somewhere exotic. Now, this is a recent realisation to me. I thought that travel photography was all about going to exotic places and taking photos of stunning beaches with palm trees and all that good stuff. But it is not. As I just said, it's about taking photos that make the viewer want to be there. Wherever that may be. Just add living a bit here. If you think about it, there are people who've got no interest in beaches and palm trees and that stuff. They like mountains, snow, whatever, cities. So it's not just all those fancy photos on the beach. We need to broaden our thinking. I'll correct that. I need to broaden my thinking. Number three, not everybody is where you are. Again, another one to think about. And another one, it took me a while to get my nut around. Not everyone is where I am. So if I take a photo locally to me, to someone else, that is travel photography, isn't it? They have to travel to be in that place. So where you are becomes an aspirational place for somebody else who's not there. That makes sense, doesn't it? And I I like that, even if I do say so myself. And let's be honest with you, it is a good job that not everyone's where you are or where I am, as it would get rather crowded, wouldn't it? Number four, explore where you are, home or away. Now, there are nice places hidden everywhere. Nice places you can find to create great travel photos. We just need to broaden our thinking and open our minds to what is around us. I once went randomly to some local woods I've driven past hundreds, if not thousands of times. I got loads of really great photos. And this is less than two miles from where I live. I mean, some seriously good stuff. Um, Portfolio standard stuff. Brilliant. And it's on New Year's Eve, rather strangely. Anyway, so get out and explore wherever you are. It's when I do this that I get the really good stuff. Uh, Different good stuff. Number five, tell the story of a place. What does this mean, tell the story of a place? Well, if you can capture the essence of a place in one, two, three, whatever many photos, then you've done your job and you should be telling a story. Six, know where the sun is going to be. I'm talking about sunrise, sunset and all the bits in the middle. Now I know not all photos are taken on bright sunny days and not all travel photos include a stunning sunset or sunrise. But let me tell you this, knowing where the sun is will help you get the better, more appealing photos. You know those expensive lights you can get? Well, the sun's the biggest light source going, and it's completely free. Problem is, you can't move it, so you need to know where it is. So it makes sense to know where it's going to be. Okay, if you check out a previous episode on apps for photographers, I'll tell you what I use so I know where the sun is going to be. Anywhere in the world, anytime. It's wonderful. Number seven, get up for sunrise. Now, I do this at home and when I'm on holiday. I love the start of a new day, and most of the time, and I mean most of the time, it's just me there. I prefer sunrise to sunset, to be honest, and many of my favourite photos were taken with that big old natural light popping up over the horizon. And let's not forget the time afterwards. Once the sun's risen, you've still got wonderful directional natural light that you can use. So once the sun's popped up over the horizon, that's not the end. It's the continuation or the beginning of the next phase. Travel light, number eight. Now I use a Canon 6D for my architectural and real estate photography. I use an Olympus EM5 Mark II for my travel photography. I mean, granted, it has a lump of a lens on the front, which is the 12 to 40 f2.8, which is my choice, of course, but the overall size, weight, and volume is reduced, which makes a difference. 
and I don't carry a lot of other stuff in my travel bag. Normally it's half full and I use the other half for my hand luggage paraphernalia. It's not a big bag either, it's a small, I think it's 20 litre, peak design everyday backpack. Which with my camera gear in, all right, my tripods and my suitcase, if I'm allowed to, as in if I've got enough weight. I use it for my hand luggage. That means I've got all my camera stuff with me and I've got space for hand luggagey stuff. Number nine, get a tripod. I use a tripod for most of my photos and it takes out about one and a half kilos of my luggage allowance everywhere I go. Uh, if you check out my photography blog at rickmacavoyphotography.com, you'll find a blog post where I recently wrote about my tripod and why it is one of my best photography accessories, and it is. Number 10. Learn how to shoot into the sun. That's straight into the sun, I mean. And to do this, you need to be careful. The sun is a big, bright old thing, and you need to be careful not to damage your eyes. So please be careful. If you're going to do this, be careful, think about it and take sensible cautions. I love taking photos with the sun in and here is a top tip from me. Take a photo of the sun using the maximum aperture on your camera, as in largest number, smallest opening. And you might find you have a very nice natural starburst effect. I get these from my Canon Olympus cameras and they're different to each other, but they're both lovely, which is nice. And it's become a bit of a thing of mine, to be honest. 11. Photograph the obvious differently. Now, we all love taking photos of iconic landmarks. Iconic? Did I say iconic? And that is just fine. I'm not knocking anyone for doing that, and I never will. Some people do, though, as though there's no point photographing something that everybody else has photographed. I've probably said that in the past, to be honest with you, so for any time I've ever said that, I apologise and take it back. I mean, why should you or I be deprived of this opportunity? So get the photos everyone else is getting, and don't worry about it. I do this. But I also try to get different perspectives, different viewpoints. And when I'm at an iconic location, I look around the place to see what else is there. Number 12. What do I do? I travel light. On holiday, I get up a couple of times in a week for a sunset. I explore places. I just love getting out and about capturing places. But I explore places and find good stuff. That's the thing that I do. Right, the talky bit. There's a lot of talk about what travel photography is and is not. But I go back to the beginning. Travel photography is all about taking photos that make the viewer want to be there. And if they are not fortunate to be able to go to a place, then travel photography can help people appreciate a place just by looking at your great travel photo. It's about sharing our wonderful planet with others. And that could be around the corner from where you live or a golden beach 10,000 miles away. Sorry, I stopped then because I wrote 10 hundred miles away that'd be a thousand wouldn't it where you live is a travel location to somebody else let's not forget that or overcomplicate this you live somewhere other people do not and you live somewhere people will never get to visit now these are just facts if you think about it so take photos that make them want to go wherever that may be take photos that inspire that show a place to its most appealing best one line summary Travel photography is about creating photos that make someone want to be there, wherever that may be. Okay, next episode. In Photography Explained podcast episode 80, how do you take great travel photos explained in less than 10 minutes? Yes, more travel photography time. Well, why not? And I'm not going to lie to you. There's going to be things I've said in this episode that will appear in the next one and the next one because I'm just trying to give you things that all fit together that make sense and make the learning make sense so this was some uh, some new stuff which i put together for this episode the next one yeah there's things in there but they're going some things are in a little bit more detail but it's all good stuff and it's all building on previous episodes and once i've recorded that one i've got a few more to script out yes these are scripted so um right shout out time The shout out is to me and my travel photography website, photosofsantorini.com. Well, it's relevant to this episode, and I'm sure they led a bit of self-promotion, aren't I? The website is about taking photos. It tells you everything about how I approach taking the photos, and a lot of the things that I've said are in there. There's 99 photos in the gallery, 30 blog posts, I think, that I wrote about, and it's all about travel photography, strictly travel photography. It's a bit of a ghost time website, to be honest with you, but hopefully people will enjoy it. Right, I'm done. Thank you for listening to my small but perfectly formed podcast. To find, yeah, I smile when I say that, don't worry. <laughs> to find out more about, about my podcast and do stuff to help me, check out photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. This episode was brought to you by the cooling effects of a fan at the back of my office. Nice. Well, it's rather hot here today. Yeah, it feels like a travel location here. It's about 24 degrees already. Right, I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again very much for listening to me and for giving me nearly 12 and three quarter minutes of your valuable time. And I will see you on the next episode. Cheers from me, Rick.